to the very verse we have this morning, Psalm, Isaiah 43, verse, we're going to begin with verse 1. I have no idea who this message is for tonight. That's none of my business. What God told me to, and uh, we're not going to worry about it because the person, you can be one of those tonight, say, I've heard that, so I can take a nap. Go ahead and take your nap. I don't care. Uh, but somebody in here this is for tonight, and I don't know which one of you it is, but I'm going to pray for God to help you to receive the message tonight as he is offering it to you. It's a message of encouragement. Isaiah 40, uh, 43. I read this morning the very first verse. It says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. Father, I thank you for the word. Now, the word is life. The word is truth. And tonight, God, we're going to bring it forth as you just speak through me, whatever you desire. I'm here. I'm your servant. I'm your voice. I'll do whatever you say. God, take this word out to this congregation. And I know it's for every one of us. I fully understand that. But God, there is someone special that you want to minister to tonight. There's someone special that you're wanting to hold. There's someone that you want to caress. There's someone that you want to say, hey, I love you. I got it. I got it. I got it. Trust me. And whomever that is, God, I pray for you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Now, in these verses that we're going to read some more in just a moment, he begins by saying, but now, thus saith the Lord. But, but, that's one of those good buts in the Bible. If you go back up to the verses prior to this, verse 25, it says, Therefore he hath poured out upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it, shall, it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not. And it burned him, yet he laid not to heart. In this verse prior to this, you see a picture of something very bad that's happening. A person rejecting God. A person that is paying a great price for it. A nation that had been under great stress. And now the God of heaven comes. And in, verse, in the very first verse, he says, but now. There is a change taking place. Is there anybody in here that's had some kind of stress or some kind of thing going on this week that's really bothering you? And you don't have to raise your hand, but really bothering you. Something that's very poignant in your life that's giving you grief and something maybe right around the corner that you're aware of. Now, I think you'd have to be aware of it for this to work. Aware of it and you're not so sure how it's going to end. You're not so sure how it's going to turn out and you have some fear, even though you know better, you have some fear within you that something's not right, something's not going to happen, something bad is out there. If you've gone through that anyway this week, this message is for you. I want you to think about it. I know we're all superhuman. We're Christians, so we're, we're Superman. We're, uh, what are all those characters, Dawson? You know, the ones you watch. What's, anyway, we're superheroes. And we, we, don't admit, we don't admit to being weak and we don't admit to hurting and we don't admit to having pain because we trust God. Well, fully on you. I just don't believe that because we're still human. And when things happen to us, they startle us to begin with. Now, it startles us and it makes us think things. That's, that's Satan bringing our faults and our patterns in life, trying to bring them on him and change us and so we can't have faith in God. So we, we do, we, we hear the doctor's report and the doctor says, I saw something, I don't know what it is, I need you to come back. What do we first think? Yeah. Hot diggity dog, nothing wrong with me. Yeah. No, something's wrong, I got cancer. I know it's cancer, I know it is. And we get depressed. We start talking about things that we wouldn't ordinarily talk about. But then we're in the state, but I'm trusting God. But what about that weak moment you have where it's cancer? Are you trusting God with that? See, that's what I'm saying. We, we act this, this, we play this big game and we act this thing out like we're somebody that's very special and superhuman and we're way above all this stuff. No, you're not. You hurt. Now, I just dare you. Go home tonight and get you a hammer and put your hand out there and hit your finger just as hard as you can and tell me you don't hurt. You're not superhuman. You have feelings just like anybody else. We have a mind that works just like anybody else and sometimes that mind reacts to a certain thing in a certain way and you're discouraged and you, you don't know what to do and you don't know what to say. But yet on the other side, you're fighting it because you know God's in control and you want to trust God. But for those moments in there and they're fleeting moments for some of us, but they're prolonged moments for some of us too because we don't all respond and we don't recover in the same way. So when those things happen in your life, it's very discouraging. 
And you don't know what to do. And even though you're saying, I trust God, you don't know what to do. So he's saying here, now you've been through a lot. You've been through the fire. You didn't know when you was going to get out. You didn't know how you was going to get out. You didn't know how it was going to turn out. You did not know that. And you're still in it. But Jesus come to them. And he's coming to you tonight saying this, but. And when you see that word but there, and it's a good but, get ready because something good is fixing to happen to you. And he says, but now, now, this moment, those of you that's going through anything, Listen, Marilyn's going to have surgery in a couple of days. You can't tell me it's not on her mind. You can't tell me that the devil doesn't bring up fears in her heart. You can't tell me that the devil's not telling David he's got a heart problem. He's going to have a, a, a stent put in or maybe he's got this going on. Or maybe his heart's fa- You can't tell me the devil is going to lie to you. He's going to tell you things just to discourage you. But understand you've got to hear the word and the word tonight at this moment in your life is but now, now, right now, it's fixing to change. The situation is not going to change. He's still going to have the heart cast. She's still going to have the surgery. But right now, it, the heart, your mind, your spirit is going to change right now because God is fixing to give you a promise. But now, thus saith the Lord God Almighty. Amen. I'd rather hear from the Lord God Almighty Amen. than anybody else. Thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, the God who made us, The God who made me, just like I am, just who I am, just the way I am, that God that placed me here at this moment in my life, that God says, take that to heart. He's speaking to you right now. That God that made me, he says to me, fear not. 61 times in the Bible are those words, fear not, written together. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So whatever the valley is you're walking through, he's talking to you tonight. It doesn't have to be surgery. It doesn't have to be a heart cath. It doesn't have to be sick. It doesn't have to be despair. It doesn't have to be finances. Whatever you're going through, a toe ache hurts, okay? Not knowing about your children hurts, okay? Past memories hurt, okay? Whatever you're going through, fear not, for I am with you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, whatever that valley of the shadow of death is in your life at this moment, fear not, for thou art with me. His word is, fear not, I'm with you. Our word is, I fear not, because he is with me. Two different words. I'm with you, you're saying, you're with me. And we can say that, and we can confess that, and we can believe that. It will begin to change the thing on the inside of us that's hurting the most. It is not the pain, the physical pain. It is the anguish and the pain on the inside that bothers us the most, because we don't want to doubt God. He said, I am going, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by your name, thou art mine. Now listen, if you're a Bible marker, I want you to do something with me. If you're not a Bible marker, I want you to do something with me anyway. All right? Jesus says a word here to us. He said, I've called you by your name. I've called you by your name. Now everybody do me a favor. I'm going to count to three. When I say one, two, three, boom, I want you to say your name out loud. Your name. Ready? One, two, three. Danny. Try it again. One, two, three. Danny. All right. I've called you by your name. Jesus knows me personally. Do you know he knows you personally? He knows you by your name. Hey, watch him call it. Uh, thing the digger. Uh, No, he knows you by your name. I have called you by your name. He called Lazarus by his name. Lazarus, come here. He calls us out of our despair by our name. Denny, come here. See, I've just gotten a little bit away from him. The devil's trying to get in between us. And Jesus is looking at me and said, Denny, come here. And he calls me back. And this second verse, when thou pass, right there, put your name. You need to write in your Bibles. 
Because you never know when you're going to pick up your Bible and see this verse and see your name there. Oh, wait a minute. So it says, I called you by your name, Danny. And Danny, when you pass, when you go through the water, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, I will be with thee. They shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest thou shalt, through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. He uses all of these descriptions here, the fire, the water, and the so on, just as descriptions. He says, when you go through the things in life, whether it be something that you fear is going to burn you up and destroy you, whether it be something that's so powerful that it's going to take you under and you're going to drown in it. He says, no matter what you're going through in life, Danny, I want you to know I'm there. Whenever you go through these things, do you understand the second word is there? Whenever you go through, you will go through these things in your life. We're not immune to it. We're not superhuman. We're not something that we proclaim that we can't feel and we can't. No, you're going to go through them. God promised that every one of us. There are none so holy that we won't go through trials and tribulations because trials and tribulations help us to grow and it helps others who see us in Christ go through them. It helps them to grow. We're going through them. So whenever you go through these things, he says, I, the Lord, thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, I am going to be with you. Our saying should be God no matter what faces me today, no matter what I face tomorrow. I may not like it. I may not enjoy it, but as long as you hold my hand, I will go through it. That should be our earnest prayer unto him. God, just hold my hand. And when you get in such great despair, rather than fretting, rather than fuming, rather than getting upset, rather than beginning to say, why, 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 why? We just need to simply say, God, I'm ready. Hold my hand. When you go through, you are going through. The third part of that is not when I go through, but when I go through the other side. I'm going through it all the way through. I'm going to come out on the other side as God's child. I'm going to be standing when all this stuff has been burned off. I'll still be standing. I'm going through it. Jesus said to the disciples, I'll meet you on the other side. The devil said, no, you won't. And the storm came. And they almost quit. And Jesus came to them. He says, oh, you have little faith. The wind, the rain, the storm that the devil brought to discourage them, Jesus looked at it and said, peace be still. And it stopped. Jesus can speak to anything in your life at any moment and stop it or change it. Anytime he wants to. You got to go through it in faith. He understands we're weak. We're humans. He understood the disciples were going to do this. You know, he wasn't mad with them. He said, oh, you little faith. My goodness, stop. He knows that our makeup sometimes we'll have little faith. But he still loves us. He's still there. And he will speak the word for us. Even when we have little faith or no faith, God is still there. And at the right moment, he will speak the word. It does not, talk, it does not take us being men and women of God with great faith to move God. Certainly that does move God. But compassion moves God. And he sees us in our situations. And we may be struggling to hold on. And he looks at that. He says, peace, leave my children alone. And Satan has to go. You've got to remember that in your life tonight. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Now turn back to Isaiah chapter 41 very quickly. Should be one page maybe back. Mark in chapter 43 put your little note there to remind you to go back to chapter 41. And in the verse I'm fixing to read to you, mark there to go back to verse 43, or chapter 43. You need that how you follow things in the Bible when God gives it to you. It's a reference right in your Bibles. In chapter 41, verse 10, it says, Fear thou, on the count of three, say your name. One, two, three, Danny. Do it again. One, two, three. Two, three, Danny. You're not enthusiastic. Some of you didn't do it. 
You don't want God's word. If you don't want God's word, go through it alone. And when you get desperate enough, you'll call out. But you don't have to go there. Just be reminded of that. When thou, who is thou? Danny. Me. You. Whenever for fear thou not, Danny. Sometimes God has to be a parent to us. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't go there. Straighten up. Sit down. Be quiet. <laughs> Wake up, Jaxie. Oh, I'm sorry. Sometimes, <laughs> scared him slap my death. Sometimes God has to be a parent to us. Fear not, Danny. Come on. What's the matter with you? Don't you know I'm here? Have you forgotten for a moment? Stand up. Face it like a man. You will go through it. It's going to be okay. Stand up. He has to talk to us sometimes. He has to remind us. And we get mad when our parents do that. Don't do that. Sit up at the table. Don't slurp your food. Wipe your mouth off. We don't like it. But don't you understand they're trying to make you be presentable? They don't want you to look like a bunch of piglets. They want you to be human beings. They're trying to help you. Jesus does that to us sometimes. He knows we're not acting like Christians. We're acting like little imps. He said, Come on, Danny. So he says it here. Fear thou not, Danny, for I am with you. No matter where you go, I am with you. Fear not. Trust God and obey God. Trusting God is not something you say. <laughs> wow, I wish I could make us understand that. It is not. Trusting God is something you do. It is an action word. Trust God. And we go around and say, oh, I trust God. I really do. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. Get me my will. But I trust God. No, it's not a saying. That's why we have such discouragement in our life. We think we can say the magic word. I love you, God. And we're living in sin like it's going to do something. No. Help me, God, when we're living in sin like he's going to really do it. Father, like he's really your father when you're living in sin. Come on. I said living in sin, not in, just sinning. I said living in sin, total rejection of God. He's not your father. You want to call out to your father and say, devil, I need your help. Because when you're living in sin, that's who your father is. Okay? I want to make sure you understand that. He says, fear not, for I am with thee. Let me tell you something. When I know that I know that I know that I know that God is with me, it changes my life. Oh, I'm still going to go through the same circumstance, but it changes right in here. And I can look at things differently when I know that I know that I know that I know. When I just say, God, I know you're with me, and it just be like, this isn't going to change in here. But when you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You got to know. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. He says, I am with thee. Do you know what the word with means there? It means near. I'm near you. How close can God get to you? You ever thought about it? A friend can get right beside me. But God has the ability to be within us. God, here's your answer. God can get as close to you as you allow him to get. See there? We can keep him at an arm's distance. We can keep him out here. But God's ultimate desire is to be in here and to bring peace and calm in here as we face the things of life. I am with you. I am near you. Be not dismayed. Dismayed at what? What, what, what is he saying? I'm with you. I'm near you. Don't be dismayed. What is dismayed? 
What he's saying here to me and you in our language is do not be afraid of the enemy's power. We don't like to admit that Satan has power, do we? My God is stronger. Yes, he is. But stronger means that this one has a level of power and this one has greater power. The devil is powerful. Don't, don't ever forget it. And if you're not living with Christ and Christ in your heart like you should be, then you become weaker than Satan is. Think about it. Why do you sin? It was just a weak moment, bless my heart. He has a weak moment. You know why I was weak? Because God wasn't where he's supposed to be in your heart. Therefore, Satan has a greater power over you. With God in you, he has no power because God's is greater. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be ashamed. As long as God's within us fighting our battles and we give in to God, everything's going to be fine. But when we get weak and we get out there and somebody says, try this. And, well, I don't know if I should or not. Oh, no. You just let God step right out here. And now he no longer, no longer is controlling you. He now is out here watching you. You've got to let God have total control. As I said this morning, he's the rudder of our life. And if we let him control us, he controls our language, he controls our minds, he controls everything. If we allow God to do that, then we're going to be safe. And we will not be dismayed at the devil's power. But if we're not careful, we will be afraid of the power of the enemy. Do not be dismayed. I am with you and greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. But whenever God comes out here and we walk away from God and we refuse to let God have first place, he no longer is in here. It's like he steps out here. And now it's the world that has a hand on you. Greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. And as long as the proper place is kept by everybody and we keep Christ in us, we do not have to be afraid nor dismayed at the power of the devil. Because in the very face of death, we look at Satan and we say, is that all you got? Bring it on. Because we know at some point God's going to step forth and say, peace. And it's going to stop. We know that. How much are we willing to endure? Whatever God wants us to. Amen. Amen. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. <laughs> I am your God. I am your God. I am your God. You know what that means? I'm ready. <laughs> I am your God. I'm ready. Nothing's fixing to catch me by surprise, Danny. Nothing he can throw at me is going to scare me. I'm ready. And I'm ready to defend you against every fire dart of the enemy. I'm ready. Nothing, we no weapon formed against you is going to prosper because I'm ready. I can stop it when I say it's time to stop it. Just walk and trust me as we go. I'm ready. Amen. I am your God means I'm ready. He's not sitting over there in a chair somewhere in the next room with the door closed. He is ready at the moment. In a split second, he's ready. <laughs> That's good. Be not dismayed because I'm ready to defend you. I'm ready at the moment's notice. I will strengthen you, your heart. I will strengthen your heart. He's not going to make me strong. So I can go out and defeat the enemy because you can't defeat a hurricane, can you? If you have cancer, can you heal yourself? He's not going to make us strong so we can say the right words. He's not going to give me great wisdom so I can preach a great sermon. He is going to change my heart. And when my heart lines up with God's word, then great things are done through me by the power of God. I can never take credit for the things in my life, neither can you. Because it's God and God alone that does things through us. He is with us, which means he is ready, and he has all power, and he will do it through us because we're walking in the way that we should go. I will strengthen you. I, God, will strengthen you. I can't go to the gym and get it. I can't run so many miles and do it. I can't die and build it up. But I'll guarantee you God can do it in an instant because he said he would. I will strengthen you. Some of us are, treat God like we do exercise. I used to love to exercise. Now I, used to, now I like to watch people exercise. <laughs> I get tired watching them exercise. I break out in a sweat. And after a while, I'll quit watching that. 
because it tires me out. We do the same thing with God. We were strong with God. We read the word. We practiced the word. We confessed the word. We were strong with God. But then we sort of got lax. And now we like to watch other people do God's things. You know, do that. We like to watch that. And we get on the sidelines and we get weak. And after a while, we don't even want to watch them anymore because it bothers us. Jesus said, we've got to be strong. We've got to make sure that the strength we have is the power of God. And you give me a saint that's 95 years old in a wheelchair, can't see and can't hear good. You let the power of God be on them, and I'll show you an individual you couldn't beat with all the forces of hell flying up against you. Amen. Has nothing to do with age, has nothing to do with health. When God says, I will, he will. And he can do however he wants to do it through anybody he wants to do it through if those people are just willing to trust God and obey God and do what God said. Don't be dismayed. I'm ready to help you at a moment's notice and I will be there. I'll strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. I'm going to help you. I hope you're writing this down. I'm going to help you. What does he mean? I'm going to help you. Isn't that something? It means when you get in need... He's going to help you. So that means what? We're going to be in need. Oh, we're supposed to live this perfect life where God supplies all my needs and I never have a problem and everything's good and everything's fine. I've got all the money I need. I've got all the friends I need. I've got a wonderful job. I've got this. I've got good health. I've got all this. I'm wonderful. I'm a Christian. No. Uh-uh. No. We are going to be in need. How? I don't know. We can lack $14 having 27 cents. All of our friends can walk away at a certain moment. The doctor can pronounce those words on us in any given moment in our life. A hurricane or tornado can come and blow everything away in a moment's notice. Our children can turn their back on God at a moment's notice. But he says, I will be there in your need. And when we have a need, rather than us going out and crying and wailing and begging and pleading with other people to meet our need for us, we need to turn to God because God said, I am ready at a moment's notice to strengthen you in your need and supply your need when we line up together. Wow. And besides that, he doesn't charge interest. Wow. Isn't that good? I will help you. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of God. I will uphold thee. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I'm going to uphold you. I got a, <laughs> I got a pineapple tree in my office. I do. Somebody gave it to me. Got a pineapple on it. That thing is growing up about four foot high. Big old pineapple right on there. And that is a gorgeous thing. The only problem is the pineapple is so heavy it just goes. And the pineapple is growing down. But they've got a rod in there. And you take that rod and you hold it up and you tie that plant onto that rod at the top so that now it's up here. Common sense. I got a couple willow trees. They're beautiful and they're going to get real pretty, but right now they're weaklings and they just fall over. So you put a stake down and tie it to the stake and what have you got? A willow tree that's standing up and pretty. You see, we have to learn to help. And Jesus wants us to know that no matter what we go through, we are going to fall. We're not immune to falling. We're going to mess up. See, I'm trying to teach you truth tonight, not a false doctrine, a feel-good doctrine. This is truth, reality. We're going to fall. We're going to fall. But he says it's okay because I will uphold you. I will drive a stake down, tie you to it, and, and what I'm tying you to is me. <laughs> You're going to be okay. There are going to be times we're going to be weak. We just don't feel this. We don't feel this, and, and this is just... Maybe a little bit more than I can stand, and I, I keep getting saggy. <laughs> you, old age makes you bow over. Rhonda took a picture of me today sitting up, and she said, sit up straight. I thought I was. 
I forgot that humpback is not straight anymore. That's why Dawson is taller than I am. It's the only reason. I'm bending a little bit. He's still erect. Oh, his time will come. And my time will too. When they lay me in that casket out straight, I will be taller than you. I will have the last laugh on this one. Jesus says, when you fail, I will uphold you. We don't go around looking for failure. But don't let failure ruin you. God's still there. Just because you step off the end of the world doesn't mean God has left you, that you're the most wretched sinner that ever lived and God's given up on you and you're fixing to die and go to hell. Don't let that be your words. Because even the greatest have their moments of weakness. But Jesus says, I love you, and I'm right there with you, and I will strengthen you so that whenever you go down, I can pick you up. And not only will I pick you up, I will attach you to me, and I promise you, Danny, I won't go over. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Where are you tonight with God? I don't know who this is for, but I'm just telling you, that's a word straight from God tonight. We need to trust God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for my God will strengthen me, uphold me. He will bless me. He's ready in a moment's notice to come and go and do because he is my God, and he said it, therefore it's true. I believe it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you for your word. An awesome word. A word, God, that strikes everyone who claims to be your child. Everything will not be peachy keen. It can't be. Because this is not heaven. You said when we get to heaven, there'll be no more. Well, then you name those things. But we're not in heaven yet. So there is more. And we're all going to face them. They're going to come to our loved ones. It's going to be there, but teach us what your word says. I do not have to fear because you said, fear not. I am with thee. I will strengthen thee. I will uphold thee. I will bless thee. I will keep thee. I will take you through. I will walk with you. I will always be there and I will never fail you. That's your word. Whether we choose to believe it or not and act upon it is ours. Help us to be your people. God, I love you, and I thank you so much for a wonderful, refreshing word that we can walk out of here with our heads held high knowing that God is able and he will make a way and there is nothing that the devil can do to us that's going to destroy us. No weapon, because our God is greater. Thank you for that. Thank you for victory. Thank you for loving us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.